I might do a daytime video, eh? I just got back from my letterbox. As you can see the package from Australia Post. I just got this new Mac mod yesterday. It's a uh, what's it called? A bonza. A vaping bag and bonza. A nice brass tube mod. RDA on top. I got this dirt cheap. New Zealand, quite nice. I've got cured tobacco R white four blend in there. It doesn't taste like tobacco at all, but whatever that cured tobacco flavour is, it's very tasty. And these mech mods are quite appealing. I've also got the Cobloni in here. I'm just going to give it a quick smoke but before I do. Here's my Australia Post parcel, bubble wrapped. <coughs> I was running a little bit low on tobaccos and I'd smoked, and my son had smoked through a fair proportion of what we had, and I hadn't really reviewed, oh, well, you know, spoken about the tobaccos that I had much in that last batch. We, Pretty well hoed through them. So, I mean, it's not a lot. But it is something. In Australia, 100 grams of tobacco is a fair bit. I've got a pouch of some more of the Cornell and Deal Red Virginia Ribbon. Oh, they've got new pouches. Some will have it. Oh my gosh, they seal well. Can't even get that open. Mmm, this batch smells a bit fresher than the previous batch. But I found that to be a good oh, straight spicy vinegary Virginia. I've actually gone for quite a few plain tobaccos in this batch. I'd, I'd sort of run out of um Cavendish aromatics as well, so I ordered some Cornell and Deal Jamaican rum. It's actually quite light. That's that's totally different from from the other Cornell and Deal aromatics I had. It's not sticky or goopy or liquidy. It looks like a burly Virginia. I don't know whose rum that is, but. Smells like a vanilla cupcake to me. Uh, some of the Cornell and Deal Bright Virginia Ribbon. Uh, yeah, similar to the red. It's a different card. It's it's much the same colour. Yes quite dry. I like this. For 20 grams you get quite a bit because you're not you're not buying water. I and mean, you can re-moisturize tobacco and I, I'm, I've got these not only to familiarize myself with single tobacco varieties but also for some of my own blending. And it's, it's a pretty standard Virginia shag tobacco smell. We have here. I, I like the um, Stockerby Nougat I bought in the last batch, and I really wanted to buy some more, but it's just too many tobaccos for me to sample. So I got some of the Stockerby Pistachio this time. I mean, this might be a bit of a contentious tobacco. It's, it does have mixed reviews online. It looks very similar to the Nougat. Yeah. I know that smell, it's it's almost almondy I suppose, it's pistachio, pistachio ice cream. And the last bag is uh, 20 grams of, that's nice and full in there, that must be pretty dry. 
of um, Cornell and Deal ribbon cut burley. That's what you'd expect a tan to brown burley tobacco. That's got. Hmm. That's got distinct vinegar note to it. Vinegar. Something sour, woody. A must. Hmm. That's very interesting. I did not expect that at all. That doesn't smell like a Dutch burly shag or. Now that haunted bookshop makes sense to me. This must be a similar style of burley to that which they used in there. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to smoke and that's, that's a nice serving of that. Alright, well that's 100 grams of tobacco. With some quite plain tobaccos. And a mild aromatic. Um, I don't know what that is. I spilt it. Looks like the burley. I might just have to throw that in my pipe. Move my mouse. Um, so while I'm at it, I'll just quickly, I was gonna smoke some Cornell Star of the East. I wanna, I've been smoking this pipe rather heavily. I'm gonna throw that little bit of burley in the bottom there. Which I've, I've smoked my way pretty much through 20 grams of the Star of the East. And, quite a good tobacco and I'm, I've been smoking let's say we'll be averaging a bowl and a half a day through this pipe and I smoked the Virginia Cavendish blend then I think I ran a bit of I've, I've been mixing Cavendish with everything I've put in it so far I put a little um, Some of the gore with rope mixed with the maple black cavendish. And I made up a bit of a mix with some of this Star of the East, which as you can see it's it's a very golden tan. Plenty of uh, oriental in there. I've got to admit I love oriental tobaccos. It's yeah, I know I said that gore with rope was my favourite. Maybe the plain tobacco, but as a condimental or aromatic tobacco. I guess the Izmirs, but not so much the Izmirs. The Basma tobacco was one that I really liked. And I mean, along with your Latakias, I mean, you may, may as well say they're aromatic tobacco. So I've tried Syrian, I've tried a few different flavours of. Cyprian. Uh, yeah, combined with a nice oriental, particularly that basma, which has that light. It's not perfumey, it's a floral spice, light sort of uplifting note that it has. And look at that, that's, it looks a lot like a camel cigarette. And I found this Star of the East. I think it comes in a flake too. I'd love to try the flake. Reminds me of the Dunhill Englishes or Balkans. I so, so I love Dunhill London mixture. And I would consider this to be I mean I haven't smoked a hell of a lot of Englishes but of, of the ones I have tried. This would be a good replacement for the um, London mixture, which I don't think Peterson is going to remake. I mean, perhaps maybe people should petition them, but I don't think it was a popular blend in the day anyway. I mean, who can blame people in London?
Uh, yeah, it's just a it's a really well balanced. I mean, definitely oriented forward, but that's the point of smoking a a bulk of you to ask me. Um, there's Latakia there. I wouldn't say it's. Definitely doesn't dominate the smoke. I mean, it it complements the. I'm assuming it's Turkish Izmir. It complements that nicely. I mean, there's just that. That woody, uplifting note. I got a hint of a floral, almost a perfume there. Mmm, very good. Very good. I mean, I went up to the letterbox, it's probably a kilometre drive. I've just done some housework and cleaning today. The rain stopped. What did I say? It's after lunchtime, what, nearly two o'clock? So I just thought I'd have a pipe, coffee, open some tobacco. I think this is the fourth bowl in the Coblonian. I gave it another buff. I mean, I'll finish this properly one day. I actually might do a green pipe. Or I'll just leave this. I mean, I've left, what would you call, touch marks. I mean, I, I could have finished that a lot nicer. I haven't bothered because I haven't even... That's not a permanent mouthpiece. I mean, I've looked into a few techniques and thought about a few techniques of making mouthpieces and all. I will make one for this. I'm going to make myself a... I'll do a church warden, a couple of longer pipes, a couple of big pipes. I'll do some more out of local wood just to try that. But yeah, I'll, I will go trekking to find some, some better wood. So I found a few articles from the 1920s about Australian native timbers and pipe making when there was a scarcity of briar, I guess all throughout Europe and the Americas. There was some research done into Australian native timbers for um, pipe making as a potential source for new materials for pipes. Uh, there's only one book written that I can't get my hands on. I've seen other articles referring to it and quoting it. Uh, but pretty much three or four of the species there are common in this area. I mean, as I said, I worked in forestry, silviculture. I, I know my eucalypt species. Uh, they are pretty much the ones I suspected, uh, ones that I've worked with. As I said, I will do the locate wood. Uh, Casuarina was another, the Australian uh, coastal she-oak or bush she-oak. It has a very, very interesting grain to it. I'll cut a piece and I'll show you one day. Um, Aborigines used it for for spear shafts. It's very heavy, but it has yeah, it has a very similar grain to a um, that odd straight grain flecking bird's eye that you see in. Um, European briars and root burls of any timber, you know, old trees, a lot of old growth in Australia. Not even growth, just left behind stumps that might be five, six hundred years old, you know, wood that's been seasoning in the ground and the ground here isn't moist, this isn't Europe, like outside is like shale and stone, there's, there's literally no topsoil and well, in this part of Australia's um, sclerophyll forests. I mean, the Brisbane River Valley and surrounds uh, the only good agricultural soil are the alluvial areas. Anyway, look, this is a whole tangent that I don't need to go into, but yeah, I've got a, quite a few ideas for some good pipe making materials. To finish off on the Star of the East, I would say the Balkans that I've tried. Um, oriental forwards, whatever you want to call them, this really does shine. I mean, it's it's up there with the best that I've smoked, which might be a bold statement, but yeah, it's to be recommended. As I said, I think it's a replacement for um, London mixture at a pinch. Yeah, have a look at that pipe. Yeah, it's it's darkening now. Still got the rough finish on it. So I buff some of the grey away. I'll I'll work out how to colour it correctly. It's 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 a natural at the moment. Mm. 
Anyway, look, I'll leave it with that. I'll talk more about this star of the year sometimes. It's probably not necessary. I mean, I'll give it four out of five. It's one of those tobaccos. Um, yeah, I wouldn't kill for it, but yeah, I wouldn't pass it up in a hurry. Anyway, yeah, look, it's I, I filled the bowl a bit more, and it's it's colouring quite well now, and the the flavour is flavour is stabilising. There's no more woody notes or any. There was just something odd about it in the first three smokes. Fourth smoke, it started to shine. Okay. I'll talk soon.